Hi everyone, Marcia Thornton Jones here. I'm the author and co-author of more than 130 books for kids. These are what some of my books look like when they're finished. But you know what? I decided maybe not to talk about my finished books today. Instead, I thought we could talk about how some of my stories get started, where their beginnings start. And usually that's in my journals. These are just some of my journals where I like to write down ideas, do a little sketching, maybe do some doodling. The way I think about journals is that they are a playground for my creative part of my mind. So today I thought maybe we could just take a look at some of my journals and see how they have helped me to learn about my story characters, how they help me to learn about the world, and how they helped me to learn a little bit about myself too. Of course, when I use my journals, I do start writing stories in them. And my writing often looks just like most people's writing might look, just straight across where I just start writing my stories. But for example, here, here are a couple of pages where I was writing on a novel and as you can see, it just looks like writing, like maybe something you might do in your classroom or for an assignment that your mom or dad is giving you. But sometimes my writing doesn't happen in straight lines. Sometimes my writing goes in different directions. Sometimes I might start with an idea and I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna go with it, so I'll put the idea in the middle of my journal and then I just start writing in circles to see where the ideas might lead. And a lot of times my writing doesn't happen in straight lines at all. They might happen in different angles, like on these pages where I was brainstorming some ideas for a book that I was writing. And if you'll notice, the writing shifts directions. Some go straight across, some go up and down, and those angles change. That's a real good indication to me where my brain made leaps. And so I like to change directions when I'm doing writing in my journal because it gives me a hint as to how my brain is working. Sometimes I'm not even ready to start writing. So I'll make lists. Here's an example of where I started making lists about the middle part of one of the books that I was writing. And as you can see, I just started drawing little squigglies to show these are different ideas in my list, things that I wanna think about when I'm writing. Other times, I like to think in a little bit more visual way. So I might do a web or a chart. For example, here's a page where I was doing some webbing about things in my life. Now with a web, you start with a central idea and then you connect other ideas to that central idea. And you start seeing where your brain is collecting ideas and they're clustered around that central idea. This is where I was trying to learn a little bit about my personal world that included my family members. And then I got fun with it and did some sketching. I also use charts and graphs. There are all different kinds of charts and graphs that you can use. One thing that you can do is just take your page, divide it in two and make a T-chart. Maybe you could list the good qualities and the not so good qualities of a character in a book that you're reading. Or you could do something like this, where I used flow charting to show the flow of ideas in a story I was working on. Another chart for that same story was a triangle chart where I just did a big triangle and I showed how all sorts of ideas stacked on top of each other, all leading to this one top main idea. Using charts and graphs and webs, they give me a visual of my story. They help my brain to think in a different way. So maybe I can come up with more ideas for the stories that I'm writing. Because sometimes when you're writing a story, you don't just 
sit down and start at the beginning and get all the way to the end. Many times you have to stop, pause, and start to brainstorm a little more. And these journaling ideas help me to do that. Another thing that keeps me on track is to make to-do lists. And I keep those in my journal as well. Doing a list of things I want to accomplish and all the tasks that are associated with those goals helps me stay focused and keeps me on track so that I do get my things done. Here's a page from one of my journals where I had lots of things I needed to do. And so I just made a checklist so that I could keep track of them and make sure I got them done. We'll have to check that later to see if I actually did accomplish everything I set out to do. But even if I didn't, that's okay, because you can always revise all your goals in your checklist, because sometimes your goals change as you start to work. Well, I talked about using charts and graphs and webs as ways to visually see stories, but there's other things that you can do as well. For example, sometimes when I am exploring a new idea and learning about the characters in my story, it helps me if I have a picture so I know what they look like and what kind of people they are. And so often in my journal, I will just sketch some pictures and say, and then write a description of those characters so that I get to know them a little bit better as I'm writing the story can even help when I'm describing my character in the story because I can open to the picture and see, oh, she looks like she cut her own hair. Maybe that's a character trait I can include in my story. So having the picture can really help. Here's an example of one of those T charts I was talking about where you can just divide a pa two pages in half and then you can have a really quick chart. Here's one where I was brainstorming character names and I divided my journal into two sides, one for boys' names, one for girls' names. And that helped me organize my thinking, which is another great benefit of journaling. Now, sometimes I'm not really writing on my story. Sometimes I just want to learn about the world or learn about myself or just write down memories of things so I won't forget them. And sometimes I like to do that with art as well. Once I was sitting out on my deck and I noticed that in a tree nearby, a robin had built a nest and the baby birds were just beginning to fly. They had just left the nest and they were perched all on the tree branch. And it was just so fun to watch the interaction of the mother and the baby birds as they started to get a little bit braver and more courageous and ease a little bit farther away from the nest. And as I watched it, I began to sketch. And then I wrote about what I was seeing. And to finish it off, I just took some colored pencils and added some color because I also wanted to remember the colors of spring and of the tree. I enjoyed watching those baby birds so much. I did something else. I did what's called a torn paper collage. What I did was first I sketched just a really rough sketch of those baby birds on the tree branch. And then I went through all sorts of old catalogs and magazines and newspapers. And I tore out teeny tiny pieces of the magazine pictures, just different colors. I would just tear them like that. And then I went to my sketch and I started to layer those torn pieces of paper on my sketch to see if I could get a sense of what those birds looked like using the different colors that I just found in the magazine. And then once I finished, I wrote just a little bit about my baby birds outside. So this is a journal entry done just with torn pieces of paper. And I really enjoy doing that. And you know what? Once I finished that, I remembered it better. 
And so even now I can look back and I remember those birds because I took the time to do just a little bit of thinking in my journal about them and then a visual representation of what I saw. Sometimes I like to sketch myself because I think cartooning and sketching can help kind of get a sense of a personality without really having to draw them really closely because I'm really not that talented of an artist. I like to draw, but I can look at a personality and then start to say, what are the defining characteristics of that character? And then make a little cartoon about it. And I did that for myself one time. Here is a whole page of me as a cartoon. So cartooning is something that's fun to do in my journal because it can, it's kind of fun, it's fast, and it can show a character in motion. And you don't have to sit there and worry about the little details. For example, one time I couldn't sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. That is so frustrating. And the next morning I didn't feel very good because I had not slept very well. And so I thought, you know what? I'll do a cartoon of me being grumpy because I couldn't sleep. And here I am. What do you think? Does it look like me? You could try that as well. Cartooning can be fun. So journaling, you can do anything in your journal. It's like, like I say, it's a playground for your creativity. Now, sometimes I'm kind of stumped and I don't really know what to write about. Maybe I'm between ideas. Maybe I'm just feeling a little lazy, but I can still find something to do in my journal. I can just look at what's in front of me and write about it or draw about it or make a list about it or chart about it. I did that one day. I was really feeling lazy and I was just sprawled out on the couch and I thought, hmm, what could I write about today? So I wrote about the first thing that I saw or that I noticed. My feet. But you know what? It was a fun activity. You can, so there's never a reason not to play in the journal. By the way, on the other side of my, that page, I did something else. This is an old picture of my grandmother. And just thinking about her one day, I pasted her picture in my journal I tried to sketch her and then I started writing about her because journals are a great place to capture your memories. Another fun thing I did is I found that I could take two totally unrelated pictures and mash them together and my creativity would just pop with ideas. So for example, we just got this magazine in the mail and we were going to throw it away. So I leafed through it real quickly and just tore out like two quick pages without really thinking about them. And now what I can do is I can take a journal and I can paste one picture in that journal and without thinking too hard, take another picture that I ripped out, paste it on there, and now I have a collage of things that I really don't know much about. But just looking at them, I can start coming up with ideas and maybe write a poem or a rhyme or maybe just some thoughts, like this makes me think about traveling around the world and seeing new things. Maybe I could write here about places I've been or places I wanna go. And so you can do that just really quickly by tearing out two pages from a journal. I'll show you an example that I've done. Here's one where I found pic an old black and white picture and then another picture in a different magazine and then I wrote a poem. So that's just something fun to tickle my creativity. Another thing that I found you can do is you can make poetry using somebody else's words. 
So here's what I do. I find old books or magazines and I tear out a page and I just rip them up so that they don't have to be in neat lines. You don't have to cut them. I just tear them out all ragged. And then I go through and I circle words that I like. Interesting words, fun words, words that make me think. And then all the other words I black out. So my page looks something like this. And in the end, I can take those words and then copy them into my own poem. I have fun doing that because sometimes I'm surprised at the poetry. Sometimes I don't even understand it, but it makes me think. Again, it's just a playground for my creativity. So journals are great fun, and it's how I often start ideas. But then sometimes I'm just blank. It's like, what can I write about? And as I think and think and think, my pen starts to doodle. And sometimes those doodles turn into really interesting shapes. For example, this doodle that I started and it turned into a tree. And what I did with this one, it reminded me of a quote out of a famous poem. And so I wrote that quote in the roots of the tree that I just started doodling with shapes and designs. Doodling is fun. You can even just decorate empty spaces of pages that you've already started writing. And maybe you just have some white space and you can decorate it with doodling. Or sometimes you can use it to decorate pictures of yourself like I did on this page. As you can see, journals are a great way to play with your creativity. I have lots of journals. I have pretty journals. I have some silly kinds of journals. I have serious looking journals. But you know what? They don't have to be that way. You can have a journal that's just a notebook or like one of these books that a lot of people have in schools. Or you can even have a journal like this one that I made for myself. You can even use scrap paper or index cards. A journal doesn't have to be faint, fancy or pretty or serious. It just needs to be ready and waiting for you to fill it up with your creative playful thoughts. There's no limit to the fun that you can have within the covers of your journals. So I hope maybe this has given you some ideas for how you can sit down, open to a blank page, and then just go on a creative field trip of fun in your journal. And you know what? I have some ideas that just might help you. I hope you enjoy them. Happy writing, everybody.